You really won the World Series of Movies because with this Thank A Quiet you. Place, Thank which you. is a great movie. And I don't know if you remember, but when you made the movie, I was like, oh, no. I, you know, I don't like to watch scary movies right. because I get scared by them. By and, everything. And it, it is a scary movie, but it's more than a scary movie Thank because you. it's got a lot of, it's really like a, Yeah, no, it sounds psychotic, but when you look at the poster, it sounds psychotic, but it's a love letter to my kids. It, it truly is. is. A, yeah. a parent to I wrote parents the movie for my daughter. Protecting their children. That's it, yeah. From all the terrifying people in their neighborhood. Right, or funny guys. <laughs> yeah. From the funny guys. Yeah. But you, it's, I think it's top 10 of the year in both box office and critical acclaim on Rotten Tomatoes. Thank you. Which wow. is, which is remarkable, because yeah. usually you get one or the other. Right. What, I want Not usually. <laughs> usually you get neither. So, yeah, yeah, usually you get neither, you're right. So I wonder what it was like that Monday, because you made this movie for like $40,000. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the monsters, you broke into a costume shop and stole I just waited till Halloween in Brooklyn. Just yeah. like pulled it down. <laughs> We're like, you're in the movie. And then it opens huge. It's a huge yeah. financial opening. Yeah, it was insane. What was it like on that Monday when you added it all up and said, oh my God, we have the number one movie? I don't know because I blacked out. I was basically <laughs> blacked out for three months. It now, nobody so over... believes blackout stories, so don't okay. say you blacked Got out. It. That's yeah. true. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> you did not good. black out. That was good. <laughs> um, it, was, uh, it was Monday morning. We, Emily and I were walking Hazel to school, and we were truly in just a, a weird haze state. We, we had no idea what was going on or how that happened, and we were so excited but couldn't really process it. And then, hilariously, another garbage truck. <laughs> it might have been the same guy. Um, <laughs> he flies around the corner and in this, like, ballet version of a garbage man, just sort of flings off the back of it midstream, grabs the can, throws it in, and as he's putting it down, he goes, saw it Sunday, awesome. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, thank you so much. And then he goes, scariest <laughs> I ever seen. And got on the back, <laughs> and got on the truck and drove away. It was amazing. This is a guy who sees scary stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He worked, his coworkers are rats. Yeah, and Emily said, only in Brooklyn will that happen. How does it, how does it work just from after you've had, and I'm curious about this because I've ne not been in this situation, but after you've had a huge... You've had no success. Success, yes. yes. I mean, like, after you've had an unquestionable, huge success, what happens, like, the next week? Do you get calls from all the studios saying, hey, now, does John maybe want to direct for us? <laughs> People that you maybe met with previously. You know, yeah, you know, to be really honest, it was <clears throat> getting calls from the people I have admired through my whole career was mind-blowing. So, yes, this thing of, you know, what does he want to do next kind of happens, but more importantly for me, it was getting calls from all these people I had worked with or wanted to work with and, and just getting acknowledged. Like, Guillermo del Toro wrote this thing on Twitter that was, I mean, truly oh, brought me to tears. nothing better nice, than that. Uh, nothing. And he's like, you know, the nicest things about Didn't the movie. Didn't Stephen King write something great? Yes. Yeah. Stephen King wrote to me and the offered me his Red Sox tickets. And I was like, what's happening? <laughs> wow. What is going on? I took them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah, it was I know so I saw great. LeBron James tweeted about it, which yes. was unbelievable. And you didn't just, well, you didn't just co-write and, and co-star and direct the movie. You also played two roles. Don't Does do anybody Don't. know this? Don't do that. <laughs> this is... Don't. Well, this is not a joke. No, nobody knows it because I've kept it. So you played the monster in the movie. <laughs> yes. Yes. I did. You were in a motion capture suit. I'm looking at a photograph of you. This right is gonna now. end my career. And no, this is not. <laughs> no, this is good. It's like Yeah, my commit the commitment level was very high. This is this is you playing your own monster in your movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's embarrassing. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, the uh, amazing people at ILM said, you know, so how does the creature move? And I said, uh, well, this is how I think he's going to crawl. And they just said, well, why don't you throw on the suit? And I was like, totally. And then um, they took that picture, and I thought I was auditioning for Lion King. Yeah, right. I, like, <laughs> I don't know what's going on in that. Did I was you, there, though, just dialed in. Did you have any, like, did you worry at all about... That this would come out? No, no not about that. Not until now. About casting your wife, about casting Emily Blunt, your wife, as the lead in the movie, because, I mean, some people get... Some people split up over, like, the, the Christmas photo, the card they take. I mean, to direct your wife in a, a movie, yeah. it's a risky thing to do. Yeah, that's why I didn't ask her to do it. <laughs> I, it's true. I never asked her to, to do the role. I wrote the movie with her in mind. I wrote her part with her in mind. But I got so scared 
First, that she would say no, because that's just an awkward dinner. Yeah. And after sure. that, it's just a lot. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I was actually more afraid that she'd say, yes, I'll do it for you, because I've been next to her when she's made all these amazing decisions, and she's without a doubt the classiest, smartest, most dedicated actress I've ever known. And, and I didn't want her to. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. And when you. Uh, when you see how much she puts into every single role, I didn't want her to come to set just for me. So I didn't ask her, and then she read it on a plane one day. She said, can I read the script? And I said, yeah, sure. And I went back to watching Avengers 6, and, um, <laughs> and, uh, which I loved. Um, and then she genuinely looked sick, and I was reaching for a barf bag thinking that she was going to throw up, and she said, you can't let anyone do this movie. And I said, what does that mean? And it was like a romantic comedy where she was proposing to me. She was like, you have to let me play this part. And I think I just screamed yes on a flight. <laughs> they landed in Texas. And then, no, it was, uh, it, was the, it, was, it was the best. It was, wow. uh, it was really, the, it was the reason why the movie is so special, because we both came to it organically, and I was so Well, excited. the movie's great, and it's on uh, Blu-ray and digital and DVD and all that stuff right now. It's a quiet place. We'll be right back with John Krasinski. Congratulations on making it to the end of a YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.